stopped by Fort Smith as he was coming from Oklahoma City and it was on his way and I gave him a little and he stopped and picked up Turbo so I had Turbo in the back and I have Bunny this will be her last litter and I just really was ready to retire her but um, she's only had three litters and she's only given me four puppies a litter so I thought one more time even though Tim and I want to take off in March and April maybe she can take care of her puppies all by herself which is a little delusional thinking but four puppies is not a difficult litter to take care of so uh, I'm going to do this breeding with Turbo maybe she can come in with six puppies this time who knows boys in the back getting his health paper because he's flying home to LAX Friday. Yay, sweet puppy. Lily and I worked so hard today and I fell out of bed at 620 this morning, but this was amazing. Like, I've been doing this calm calcium, which I've done it before years ago, but it's not like I consistently do it. This is not consistently something that is part of my regimen, like some things are. So I do that and this uh, Viseo CBD oil that I really like because it puts me in a deeper sleep when I do it. Tanya says it's something about canapulins, if I'm saying that correctly, whatever that is. I don't know. It puts me in a deeper sleep. And then Viseo makes this stuff called sleep. And I don't know what's in it. But last night I got seven straight hours. I know. Like, I do not remember in the last year that I have slept without getting up and checking on things. Seven. I slept from about 11.30 to 8, to 6.20 this morning. I did not wake up, which is not like me. I'm, I can hear a mouse pee on a cotton ball at the end of the hall with the door closed. I, so any little thing can wake me up. When I woke up this morning, I thought it was 2 o'clock. I get up and check on everybody. But it was 6.20, so I just stayed up and I felt rested. I felt marvelous. So I think I'm going to kind of add drinking this. And I do take magnesium and calcium. I do. But this stuff's the bomb. <laughs> and it's a tea and you put hot water in it. It's lovely. Anyway, I don't know why I said all that. I had eight hours of sleep, and I'm glad because today has been the day. Lily and I have been so busy, we have not eaten. So when I, I had a puppy, puppy pickup, I didn't realize was coming today. She just shows up. I mean, she told me yesterday I might come today. She, she's driving all the way from Florida by her. I didn't know she's by herself, older than me. I mean, this woman's got it going on, right? Drives this big honking pickup, and she just appears. <laughs> so. That was Coco from Holly's Litter going home. Rob came and picked up Holly Berry and two puppies to go to uh, Pennsylvania and Connecticut. So that was exciting. I still got to call those people and tell them that their puppies are on the way. So that's very exciting for them because they wanted their puppies last weekend. Um, everybody's doing fabulous. Puppies are going home. This puppy's going home Friday on the plane. He's not happy. He's not very happy with me. I hear you, sweet baby. Amidst all of this, I mean, we only had 15 puppy packs ready. We have 44 puppy packs to do. So Lily got done with her school about 10.30, 10.40, and she has been we haven't even eaten today. Finally, at three something, when I had that puppy pickup show up, my blood sugar dropped, and I said, I did have a shake this morning, and Lily didn't. I said, I need a piece of cheese. So I went and got some baby Swiss, and yesterday I was coming back from the vet, and I stopped and got some gizzards, which were kind of a treat for me, and which were would have been fine, 
ago, Lily wanted chicken strips and she didn't eat them all and I ate a piece of her potato and then that was it. Last night my stomach was upset and I was sick and I knew better. I knew better but I did it anyway. So trying to make better choices today. Staying with some fruits and nuts and a little bit of cheese and crackers. And if I can just eat a little bit then I can keep going. Because one of the hardest things you'll do is digest food. Especially if you give your body not very digestible food like grease. It's very hard to digest. So if you want to run hard and play hard and uh, be productive, do not eat fried food. Especially out of a gas station. But they make really good fried gizzards. They got half a and then I did not mean to upload that video last night of Polly Berry. I did that for Donna who's getting her in Connecticut. So I did not mean to upload that video to the YouTube channel. Not that it mattered. I was just showing Donna that this is who this dog is. She's very sweet. I can take food out of her mouth. But when you put food on in her dish, she will growl at anybody and everything. I mean, she probably wouldn't growl at me, but anyway. And Donna needed to know that put her in her crate, don't bother while she's eating. So I ended up uploading that video of all my crumbs from my uh, chicken gizzard, my chai, my fried chicken gizzards. I probably hadn't had them in six or seven months, but it's okay. It's okay to eat a little bit like that, but it's not okay to eat a lot like that. So the puppies, we got Callie's litter microchip today. Yay, it was amazing because they're going home this weekend. And I think, drum roll please, I haven't seen them on the table, but just holding them, I think I picked my puppy. But I haven't seen them on the table, and this can certainly change. I think I have picked Orange Boy. Um, and of course, Infinity, that pink girl, I haven't changed my mind about her. And then Jenna in, or, uh, Jennifer in uh, Virginia is getting a show girl out of the splitter. So I do have to put them on the table and make a decision and allow her to choose her puppy. So it's 39, but it just feels cold today. I know you Alaskan friends make fun of me, 39, right? It just feels cold to me today. It was just a little cold today. But it's a beautiful day, and God is so fabulously good to us. And one thing, new thing, God, it's a new thing. I do this a lot. When I wake up, thinking about 10 things I'm grateful for, and when I go to bed, thinking about 10 things that I'm grateful for. Because if I could say one thing about my life, your life, and this world, and that is our thoughts determine our actions, and our actions get us our results, whether our results are sitting on the couch or whether our results are learning a new language or writing your book or you know one of my goals is pressing a handstand I, ha I need to practice more than once a week if I'm ever going to get to press a handstand now I was never able to do the splits even when I was a child they could do back bends and jump in the air and yeah, I was a cheerleader for a school so small, the graduating class was seven, was 17, okay, so, but having said that, I was pretty active being a cheerleader, you know, I, we would run wind sprints with the basketball girls, our school was so small, all we had was basketball. And we were just fit, you know. When I was young, we were just, we just were. We didn't, it was, it's kind of odd. In the 70s, we didn't see as much obesity as you do today. We just didn't. I mean, like, I, I don't remember. 
remember there being people in my class that were not fit. We just, of course, I found, you know, having said that, in Madison County, we all worked. I don't know anybody who didn't work. We all worked. <laughs> just, we were a working community. If you didn't work, you didn't have anything to eat. So we just worked. And I'll say this, too. In the 70s, it wasn't like it is now in that uh, it, Pete, the government didn't just give people money. It wasn't like that. If you were going to be quote unquote disabled, it, that wasn't it. That the government wasn't easy. Let's just put it that way. There were very few people that were quote unquote disabled because the government just didn't say yes to all these requests. And then in the 80s, it was more. And then in the 90s, I'm on my soapbox. Sorry, I don't know why I did that. In the 90s, early 90s, and I, so here's kind of a little peeve of mine. And I'm not saying that if you have one leg, you're not hand, some similitude of handicapped, okay? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Here's what I'm saying. When you reward people for being handicapped, and I know a lot of people personally in my life that I've ran into that, uh, I mean, my neighbor before had had a heart attack, and so he was disabled, right? And then his daughter was mental, and so they disabled. She said to me, they disabled me. No, honey, you chose to be disabled, and you chose to ask the government to give you a check. And so, one reason that I, if somebody's disabled and getting a check from the government, this may offend you, but one thing that I watched in my life, okay, that I feel strongly about this, from when I was six years old, my daddy was working on a big, not a semi, but it was like a box truck, and the box fell on him, and it injured him so bad. He was in the hospital for six weeks, and the, the doctor said, you will never walk again, and you'll never work again. My daddy worked 80 hours a week his entire life. He did walk again. He walked with a limp. My daddy would never have anybody ever call him disabled. My daddy taught me to work. My daddy was a proud man. And my grandparents that helped raise me, we worked. We didn't expect anybody to give us anything. We worked. So, I said all that to say this. When I see people in Walmart that weigh 400 pounds because they chose to overeat and to eat incorrect things, it's not that I don't have compassion in my heart for them. It's not that I don't want better things for them. But please, do not ruin your health and then pretend like you're a victim and say, poor pitiful me, I'm disabled. I need, I'm so fat, I can't work. I mean, I understand. You, who would want to carry around 200 extra pounds every step of every day? I'm not saying that's not spiritual too. You know, we knew to address things on the spiritual level. I'm not saying that. And I am in no way condemning people, but I am saying this. If you're gonna be a victim and you're gonna pretend like you're disabled, you will get what you have chosen. And the scripture says, ill-gotten gain will do you no good. So if you want to pretend like you're disabled because, I know I met a lot of people that, if for emotional reasons, the government started giving them a check because, well, I'm so pitiful, I just, I don't feel good about myself, so I can't work. And the government starts giving them a check. And it's like the government is not only paying people to have babies, now they're paying people to be pitiful. And so here was my whole point about driving up to Walmart and 
or any store and getting the best parking places because we're disabled, you know. I'm just saying, saying what I'm saying. America does not need more disabled people, okay? And I understand that our military men coming back from the war and uh, just horrible, horrible places. I'm not saying that they don't have demons. They need deliverance. And I'm not saying that they don't have special challenges. Trust me, they do. And I'm not saying that they don't deserve help. They do. My point is at some point, you need to want to be well, and you need to take steps to be well, okay? Pretending like you're disabled and you can't get better, pretending like you're a victim and there is no healing is just believing a lie. That's just believing a lie. So, yeah, I do feel strongly about these things, and I would never. Someone says, oh, you can get a handicap sticker and put it in your car, and then at the dog shows, you can park up front. I said, honey, I would never claim to be disabled, even if I did have one leg. If I didn't have either leg, I wouldn't claim to be disabled, because I am not disabled, because disabled is right here. That's where it's at. It's right here. It's in your mind. I have seen people without legs ride horses. And when I watch these people do things like that, this is what I say <laughs> to myself. Hey girl, what's your excuse? These people have to climb a rope to get on their horse. And they have to put things on them to stabilize them on their horse. And they choose to ride anyway. And we can choose life anyway. And think about, what is that guy's name like? something Mervakowicz or something like that. He's from another country. The man has no arms. He has no legs. He has a little flapper of a foot, right? But he chose to not feel sorry for himself. I love watching him. He's so inspirational. He has no arms. He has no legs. All he has is a trunk and a head and a flapper of one foot. And he's an inspirational speaker if you want to go find him. I think his name is Mark or or Wakalich or anyway, look him up. Trust me. Put in there. Man that surfs. Has a family. Has children. I guess he has good body parts. The beautiful wife. Why? Because he chose not to be disabled. Because he chose. Because he chose every day not to be disabled. So don't don't tell me about how pitiful you are and how how you need a wheelchair or how you need to be disabled. And I'm not saying everybody, that some people don't need a wheelchair. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in America, when it, excuse me, I'm talking. Thank you. If the government's going to pay people to be pitiful, they're going to get more pitiful. So that was kind of my point. Sorry, I spent 18 minutes on my soapbox. But you ever wonder how I feel about things? That's it. And if you, you know, I heard Brother Moore say this one time, never, ever feel sorry for yourself. That's good advice. Never, ever feel sorry for yourself. That's not from God. That's not from God. That's from the enemy. And I, you know, the truth is, none of us have a corner on the market of being injured. None of us. We've all walked through things. Just like my daddy having that truck fall on his back. He couldn't walk for six weeks. He laid in a hospital bed. But he chose. He chose to get up out of that bed. And he chose to walk again. My dad, mm, I think I was in my late 20s when he had an artificial hip put in. And it was amazing. So this is very interesting though, let me say this, if anybody's still with me 20 minutes later. When that doctor put that artificial hip in, he told my daddy, you will walk with a limp. And dad said, oh no, I'm going to walk. And he always wanted to walk straight, right? Not. He kind of had to swing his leg out a little bit when he walked. 
and the doctor said no your brain and your muscle memory it will cause you to walk with a limp and daddy said mm -mm, I won't and and he caught himself doing it that muscle memory and he retrained himself not to walk with a limp it, it wasn't a limp like it was he had to kind of swing the, and it was a natural thing I just watched him do it you know so much it wasn't even something that I noticed because that's just the way he walked uh, and my dad was in pain I mean you know almost all my growing up years I mean not intense and excruciating pain but there was pain but he still chose to get up and he still chose to work he worked you know 10 12 14 hour days and then we had a farm and he would work on the farm on the weekends and he's always doing a project so I admire my dad and I definitely appreciate the fact that he instilled in us children a good work ethic and that and that for, for me it's never typically I do not think oh I have to go scrub the toilet or oh I don't have a tub I don't have a toilet but anyway if I did <laughs> I have a Johnny on the spot somebody else cleans I'm just saying whatever job right so I work at controlling my attitude and my thoughts. I never think, oh, I'm dreading doing this. I don't do that. Even today when we were so busy working on these puppy packs, I was thinking, thank you, God, for all these puppies going home. Thank you, God, for all of the components for these puppy packs so that we can put them together. Thank you, God, someone else is here to pick up a puppy. And when we can live our life that way, it pleases God, and isn't that our ultimate goal? I would say that. The title of this post could be, My Purpose is to Please Father God. And I know someone personally in our family that this person's attitude when they go to do something is, just get it done, just get it over with, just get it done, just get it over with, just get it done, just get it over with. And so... They're not doing their best, and they're not bringing their best to whatever they're doing, whether you're scrubbing the toilet or making a bed or cleaning something or whatever you're doing, right? If your, excuse me, if your attitude is just get it over with, you know, how can that be pleasing to Father God? It's not. It's not. And you, of all people, will be most miserable if you choose to have this attitude of just get it done, just get it over with. Because, I don't know if any of y'all ever saw that movie, Click It. it. The whole movie was about this attitude, right? You've missed your life. At the, end of the, at the end of your life, guess what? You missed what God gave you, the gift of your beautiful life. You just missed it. You just missed it. You just missed your life. And life is precious and life is a gift. And even when we're doing hard things, and even when we're going through hard things, you know, I think about my precious friend that buried his wife and then he buried his son. There are hard things. Life is still a gift and life is still precious. God gives us grace to embrace each season of our life. All we have to do is ask for it. Go to the throne of God. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I say is, Father, I ask for grace and I receive grace for my day. And I'm not saying I never have bad days. Of course I have bad days. I think I yelled at my husband either yesterday or today. He was yesterday. He was asking me about a puppy pack. And I was like, it's not done yet. I'm not saying I never have bad days, okay? I'm saying I have to stop and say, God, I ask and receive more grace for my day. More grace for my husband. More grace for my marriage, right? And God is happy to give us that grace and that 
ways is the supernatural power that Jesus Christ walked in when he was here on this earth. And you think about Jesus, you think about all these people like pulling on him emotionally, pulling on him, pulling on him, pulling on him. And you know, there were times that he walked away. He walked away to be with God. He walked away in the morning to go and have his quiet time with Father God. He walked, he walked away and that's not a wrong thing to do. And so when he came back, he was full of grace for these people that were pulling on him. He had something to give these people that were pulling on him. So may we be like Jesus. May we walk in grace and with grace. And if I said something that offended you today, I'm sorry you were offended. I'm not sorry I said what I said. This is the way I see life. To have a better life. grace and we need to receive our life as a beautiful precious gift every day so that's my word for the day and Lily's texting me our horses are getting shoes so I'm gonna clip off here and call her and make sure we got everything done right all right guys bye bye